All right, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans, and welcome back. Today, Murray River and Murray Cliffs, beautiful stuff. Bit of a breeze, we're tucked away in the shadows here. It's a nice little posse I found myself. Now today, basically the composition is all gonna be about those cliffs and the beautiful reflections of the water. Just a simple composition, but hopefully, the simple composition will help build up strength by, through simplicity. Okay, now, basically what I've done is I'm working on the clear prime Belgian linen that I do, working with the oil paint again and with the palette knives. Okay, so now I've just blocked in a quick few lines to just fill the cliffs. And now I'll go for the biggest differences, which is, let's have a look what you got there. Okay, um, hmm. Might just put some of that sky in first. What have we got here? A bit of blue, a bit of magenta. Cobalt blue, magenta, and a tiny bit of burnt sienna, just to knock it back a bit, a bit more magenta. I'm trying to build, there's a few clouds there that are fading in that top corner, but they're kind of a grey colour, but they've still got some sort of colour left in them, so just a nice tone like that. Let's have a look. Good, it's a neutral tone with a little bit of colour in it. So just slide that on. This gives a slightly darker background so the cliffs can really pop with that slightly darker backdrop. You can probably get those cliffs to jump out a little bit more when, they're, when I'm up to that stage. Some white, yellow ochre. White and yellow it. Got some willows here. Hang on. Hold them back. Oh, it's a bit of fun. It's going to end up in the paint. Got a bit of that on. Now, blue. I'm going through that blue pretty quick. A bit of magenta again. Some white. Quite a dark as I go towards the top. As I'm going up to the top of the sky, I've gone fairly dark tone. It is quite dark today. Maybe not quite as dark as that. Get that in. Now I've got a bit of I've got a bit of tape around the edges which I'll take off later on. Got a basic feel now. Okay now. A dark tone in, so I'll go for a bit of burnt sienna, maybe a bit of Viridian green, a little bit of dark red, a little bit of crimson. I just want to establish a dark tone on the water's edge there. Look at those leaves coming in amongst it. Just something to work with as an accent. A lot of that will get covered up again, but the idea is. Lighten a little bit as I go back that way. The idea is you've got your undertones you can work back to. Yeah. The green again. Yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Just going to paint the shadow tone of some of those trees on the other side. There's just a few, not too many. It's good to put the darks in first with an oil painting and then you can put the lights in over the top. Okay, that's pretty good. Now what I'll do is just start getting that bank in straight away. What do you got? A bit of cat orange and burnt sienna and white. Make up a really light rich tone. It's got more yellow ochre. I can see that straight away so that can go into the mix. It's the beauty of working yeah, more yellow ochre. The beauty of working on site means you can see all those subtle colours much easier than if you're doing it at home from a photo. It's all good. It's just going to go to this size knife instead. Just a bit easier to get those major tones in quicker. I'm leaving a bit of the raw linen coming through. Just 
some of the colours of those cliffs are very similar to the colour of the, lin the exposed linen. So, to make the job easier and effective, you can leave bits of linen. Now, I've gone for more yellow ochre. Just to here, just varying the colours and tones. There's a bit more yellow ochre here and there sometimes. Stand back and have a look at that one. Okay. Alright. More of a light tone on the top. That's a nice light tone, just sort of jutting along the top there. Kind of a limestone -y, sandstone. -y. Look at those birds on the other side. Beautiful. Okay, now. Orange and yellow ochre again. Just gonna just go a slightly deeper tone than the actual colour of the cliff. Just put a bit of that reflected in now by pulling down with the palette knife. Going across as well. down to give the illusion of reflections. Going all the way. Okay. Come down a bit where the light tones are. Stand back and have a look, eh? So that's good. Now I'm going to paint a bit of this green water. So, some of that viridian green, a bit of that sky blue colour. Yellow ochre and burnt sienna to make it more of an olive tone. A bit lighter in tone, a bit more blue from the sky. Just have a feel, we'll just put some into it looks like. Not too far off. Just half rubbing them together. Got this knife here for a minute. Put that in the bin. And what I might do is just pull through straight like that, wipe it clean. This is like, really mimics the reflections just by pulling straight through. Clean knife every time. Automatically, I mean straight away you can see there's a bit of an effect going on. a bit more of that high level cloud, it's quite nice. What have we got here? A bit of yellow ochre and white. A bit of burnt sienna maybe. Because as it, as it mixes with the sky, it'll tend to go a bit green if you just use yellow ochre. So a bit of that burnt sienna seems to stop that. That's too burnt sienna, let's go a bit whiter. Just got to make it up as you go, go by feel. through here and there to uh, soften a few things. Right. Right now, I've noticed there's a few mellies up on the top, so let's bang some of them in. Burnt sienna, a bit of a neutral colour, burnt sienna. Viridian green. Maybe a shade of magenta to knock it back. 
some lightning with a bit of that sky white so it's not too bright. There we go there, let's just uh, lightly touch. Gotta be careful because you can go too dark. It's not crazy dark tone. up a bit of a light source for some of these uh, some of these gums that are just just nice little gums on the side there. A little bit of grass like I said had the shadow of the grass in first now put in the, the light source. Stand back. Just whip up a bit more of that bank colour. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cat orange. More white in the mix. Just lightly dragging it on, going a bit thicker because the clips are quite chunky. And the water is the opposite. The water is soft and reflective. Some of this stone up here is quite weathered and it's more of a complementary uh, kind of a grey magenta colour so that's a good way to get used to, make the use of warm and cool contrast so I'm throwing a bit of that in. Just add some of it into the water as well so it all matches. Some of those greens through where the grass is just meeting the edges. It's kind of hard to see what's going on with that tape, so I'm going to take that tape off. That was just to give me a guide, get me started, get me some nice clean edges. Take that off. It always looks different when you take that off. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, but well, there you go, look at that. Added a bit of extra texture there then. Okay, now I'll just drop this in the bin, I'll stand back and have a look. Right, what have we got here? Pull through. Pull through and soften again. Slightly touching with the knife, just to ever so slightly soften. Just with a clean knife, just lightly dragging through. Just pulling those things up a bit. Come back. The sun's going to be on the cloud for now, but that won't matter. There, Pick up a little bit of burnt in the magenta, another ochre. And I'm not 
fucking a few of the shadows that are there on the cliff where it's catching the light, showing the, the erosion and contours. There's the character of the bank. Take a little bit of paint off with a clean knife there, or wiping it clean. Take a bit of paint off to increase the draftsmanship. The sun has gone behind a cloud. I wish it was back out because I was painting a nice sunny day, so it's a bit hard to see now what's going on. I'm waiting for that sun to come back. It looks like it's going to, but it's going to wait for a minute. It's not going to do it straight away, unfortunately. Bit of sunlight coming back. It's mixed up a bit. Oh, here we go. Sun again, you beauty. Bit of magenta and blue here. I'm trying to mix up kind of a dusty grey trunk colour. So the, there you go. Let's have a quick look as the sun comes out because it gives me more of an idea what's happening on the cliff. But hang on. While I'm doing that, I might just. Going to introduce a few of those trunks. They're quite purple, which is quite interesting. They look nice. So, trunks and those gum trees on the other side have a nice purple magenta look about them. So why not put that in? That's always a nice colour. A little reflective version down there. Soften those reflections. Just making up light in that tiny bit. Making up some of that foliage again for those gum trees on the other side. That's about the right time. That's about it. Yeah, that's good. Drop it in as it goes along. Drop a bit in there. Stand back in the wood. It's all going good. up a very light bluish tone here over with this sky blue. So real careful here but lightly lightly drag it across. Where the wind's kinda the wind's coming across and catching the water. using red because it's a nice complementary colour, has a dark tone. You've got all the pale greens in the water. The red's quite a good complementary colour to make it pop.
Where's that big knife gone? Where's that big knife? It's a bit of fun we could use this knife for the softest reflection. That way you can just grab hold and do it in one go. I put it on here, slide straight down. Look at that. That gives a very contrasting effect. That's a very contrasting effect compared to the chunkiness of the cliff. We've got a help of some blues out this here. Like so. Look at the cobalt blue and magenta. There's some really, some really nice pale shadows from this gum tree behind me, just cut, cutting across. Gotta be gentle for this one. Gotta make them light. Gotta get the right tone first, that's about it. Pull it, pull it like that. Just give us some of those shadows on the water surface. Well, kind of it, I mean, we've got basically what I was after. details in here and there. Yep. That'll do, I'll just leave it at that. But as you can see, the basic oval effect is there. We've got the beautiful cliffs and then that reflective quality of the water. All right, no worries. Thank you.